Okay. Hey folks, this is Dave Lytle here. Uh, sorry about the mic being in front of my face, but we got to get the sound up for you so you aren't struggling. Uh, I'm uh, at home now, probably sick with uh, Omicron, and I figured this would be a fine time for my son and I to make a little recording and share some information on Orion's new 8x30 ED. Uh, it's a little poro prism that uh, I thought was going to solve all my woes. Uh, I'm going to give you a kind of a little background history. I was doing some wheeling and dealing in Binox and came across these 8x30 Binuxets, which uh, I just, I loved them. Uh, they feel great. Uh, they really throw up a nice pretty picture, but quite honestly, it was a little dim. Uh, it was a little dim because it doesn't have the modern coatings, doesn't have the ED glass, it really didn't need the ED glass. But uh, the worst part is it just uh, didn't have the eye relief. So I was left not being able to get the full field of view, which is a little frustrating. Uh, my son and I went to uh, a show, and at that time I picked up two pieces uh, just out of curiosity. Uh, there was another 8x30. I thought I'd give it a shot. Um, it's a, a little BPO4 uh, from Russia. Uh, kind of heavy. Uh, nice chunky piece that uh, gave incredibly sharp central image. Much actually better than the Binuxet. So again, I get excited about 8x30, only uh, the problem is, again, not the eye relief. Uh, I'm looking down two barrels. Uh, can't see the outer edge of the field. Um, out of curiosity, I recently picked up a Bar and Stroud 8x30, thinking, well, maybe I'll get lucky with that one. And uh, my son will concur that we didn't get lucky on any account with that. Yep. Um, <laughs> But anyway, having gotten the 8x30 bug, because I just liked the smallness, the compactness, and I liked the 8 power, um, I had to believe there was something available that would give me what I wanted. So when I saw that Orion was offering this 8x30 uh, Poro Prism, waterproof, and with ED lenses to boot, um, I figured I'd give it a go. I've had experience with ED lenses, and uh, while some people will say it doesn't make a bit of difference, and in some cases it doesn't because sometimes your standard glass is just done so well you have a great view uh, without a lot of color fringing, on a number of occasions the ED really has proven to give me the edge, and it isn't a matter of me being irked by the color fringing because very often it's so small you really have to seriously look for it in order to be bothered by it um, but it's just the knowledge that when you got all those colors coming to a closer focus you know you should be getting a, a sharper image and a sharper image is what i was looking for um, the other binocular that my son and i picked up at that show was this asahi pentax marine now it's individual focus, which is not necessarily my favorite. I like the central focus feature, um, but oh my gosh, it's it's like it's it's almost Swarovski clarity and sharpness. It's just amazing. So it kind of has become my standard, the gold standard for small binoculars. And essentially, I was looking at the Orion now, not compared to the others because it totally beat them. Um, the Orion does give you a very nice, clear, sharp image, uh, at least out to about 75% of the radius um, of the field. The problem is that that's just not enough for me. I have two things going. I got astigmatism. I need the glasses. I can't take them off, or I got screwy vision no matter how I focus my unit. Um, and with the glasses... Uh, I not only can't get the field of view, so if you're, if, I'm going to tell you, if, if you don't wear glasses, if you don't need corrective vision, these are great binoculars. They will give you a beautiful field, great natural color and sharpness. Uh, I'll get into the mechanics of it later, but I mean, just from an optic standpoint, it's a great little unit. Um, but 
for me, because I need the glasses, uh, I can't see the full field. It's come closest to all of these. This has come the closest to letting me see the full field, but it just isn't cutting it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the other problem is, as I was saying, uh, at 75 percent, uh, where where the the focus starts to roll off, uh, it it it's enough for me to notice. Enough for me to notice such that I'm, I'm constantly thinking that I have this thing out of focus and I try and focus it a little bit more and then I lose the center. And then I go, oh yeah, that's right. You know, that's just the nature of this binocular. So uh, that, uh, that was irksome. And when I try to physically, uh, even with the, uh, the, the, the little rubber lips on the eyepiece folded down, I try and peer, physically peer to one side. I can get it, but then the other side becomes occluded, which everything on top of everything else, it just makes for a little frustrating unit. So if you're an eyeglass wearer, I would, uh, I'd give it a pass. Um, there are evidently eight by 32 roof prisms out there that are gonna give you uh, beyond 18 millimeters, they'll give you 19, 19 and a half, 20, like the Steiner Safari will. <coughs> Sorry, this is the COVID. Um, you even have uh, Barska, which has the uh, battalion. The Barska battalion is, uh, they advertise 22.8 millimeters of eye relief. But I haven't tried it. I can't speak for its optics. I know that you're dealing with a lot of weight at that point, a little over three pounds, I guess. And um, you're going to be dealing with the gradical in front of your eyes the whole time. Um, so really, if you need the eye relief or you just appreciate the eye relief, this is about as good as you're going to get in a poro prism right now. Um, on the physical end of things, um, it seems very well built. Um, the little particular features such as the uh, central focus a lot of people make a big deal about the central focus being i don't know stagey or something on different binoculars this one isn't i'm actually familiar with uh, the central focus on uh, leica's and swarovski and quite honestly this thing is perfectly passable it's nice and smooth um, doesn't seem to be stagey or have build up at any point um, maybe I just got lucky, but this is really nice. And, and the uh, diopter, it's the same. Uh, you don't have to struggle to move it, but once you've moved it, it just stays put. Uh, a nice feature. Another nice feature is, uh, and I've noticed this on a number of binoculars, uh, the rain guards for the oculars have a tendency to drop off. Uh, these don't. Uh, the nature of the rubber uh, and the particular fit to the rubber rims here on the eyepiece is such that it grabs, it, it uh, clings, and it will not come off. Um, and on the front, on the objectives, you've got uh, the internal fitting uh, caps, uh, which some people prefer over external ones. I, personally don't know what the difference is except that uh, yeah I, I guess it's a nice touch since it's a feature that uh, is uh, preferred by many so you get this with a nice little case uh, strap the typical lens cleaner um, standard stuff uh, but <clears throat> it's a real shame it's a real shame it was uh, a nice piece uh, just didn't meet my needs. My son liked it, didn't you, Steve? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, and my wife, who doesn't want me to keep any binoculars anymore, uh, had to admit that it was nice also. But uh, that's that. Um, I'll leave you with that for now. Uh, I'm going to keep pursuing 8x30s. I'll let you know what I find. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.